The UP 200 Midnight Run and Jack Pine 30 sled dog races wouldn't be possible without the help of many working hands. Haley Schoengar joins us live again and tells us about some of the help that people put into making this event the big hit that it is today. Haley. Good evening, Rebecca. Now, I am right here in front of the judges' table, and these are some of the people that work behind the scenes to help this race be what it is every single year. Their first priority is safety of the mushers and some of the dogs, but they do a lot of different things. I caught up with two volunteers who are no stranger to the UP200 and some of the work that goes in behind the scenes. Dogs, dogs, and more dogs. The center of the UP 200 is the athletes that make this event possible. The team of highly trained dogs that pull the sleds and the mushers to perfection. But a lot of work is done behind the scenes in order to make this race a reality. So you want to do whatever you can do to help everybody get through the race safely. Um, it, it's not as much as, as penalizing people or anything like that. You just make sure everybody plays by the rules, which for the most part, everybody does. And, um, try to help them get a good smooth race in. Al comes from a line of dog sled racing royalty. His father, who was a musher himself, and Al followed in his footsteps. After a UP 200 victory under his belt, Al was offered a chance to stay connected that he couldn't resist. I just, it was time to uh, pass it on kind of thing. The dogs went to some other good mushers and, uh, and so at that point, the UP 200 asked me if I'd like to be a judge. And I thought, well, that's a front row seat to a good show. So I was uh, more than happy to do that. But Al doesn't work alone throughout the event. For over the last decade, Al and his driver, Brenda, have been an inseparable pair. Uh, my role, I think I've calculated this will be my 28th race that I'll be volunteering for. And I started out as a driver for a judge and stayed there. So I have been driving judges and actually Al, the race marshal, for years and years. And my job is to get them to wherever they need to be on the race trail, be it a checkpoint, be it a road crossing, or wherever the trail might be running parallel to the road. My job is to get him or her, because we do have female judges, to where they need to be. Due to the Canadian border restrictions in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic, Al is not able to make it as the race's race marshal, but his legacy he has built will not be absent. Yeah, even I was here last year and I, and I flew home for two weeks just to go to the race and then flew back here. Like that's how much it means to me. It's, it's, I really enjoy it. So You know, he's been around the race for eons, you know, his dad being a musher and then him mushing and racing and being a winner of past and then now being a judge, you know, he definitely has, you know, he has a legacy in the race himself. And it's amazing to watch and see the respect that he gets from these mushers and even ones that he's just met or ones that he's raced with before or kind of grew up or, or matured in the mushing world with, but he garners a respect from them by how he treats them. And he knows what they're talking about. He listens to them. He hears what they have to say. And he does as much as he can to try to facilitate their, you know, get their needs taken care of within a reasonable faculty. And with Al not being able to make it to the races this year, Josh Lindstrom will act as the race marshal for the races this year. It was so much fun getting to chat with Brenda and Al about all things UP200. And I did see Brenda a little earlier today, and she was taking tons of pictures and videos, and she assured me she was sending them all to Al. That way he would feel a little bit of love from up here in the UP. Reporting live from downtown Marquette, Haley Schoengart, Local 3 News.